Let me tell you the story of a little girl. She was born in a small town, one of three daughters. She had two loving parents and lots of friends. She loved playing dress up and dancing in her backyard. All in all, her life was really good. At the age of 10, her cousins gave her her first diary. This is one of the first entries. Dear diary, I brought my Cabbage Patch doll to school today. I gave Mr. Kreitzer some candy and a card. P.S. I'm on a diet. I weigh 95. I'm going to weigh 90. Thanks for listening. At a young age, comments about her body started. Oh, look at your curvy little body. You're going to be a fox when you're older. Oh, you sexy little thing. She liked this attention, and it made her feel uncomfortable. As she grew, the attention continued. She was a popular straight-A student and star on the theatrical stage. And once again, she liked this attention. And sometimes her friends were mean and jealous, and this made her feel guilty. So in this twisted way, she dieted in order to get attention, and then she uncontrollably ate to feel like she fit in. She became obsessed with her food and with her weight as a way to feel safe. At age 20, she wrote this. I often wonder why time and time again I'll eat something that I know makes me sick and feel shitty about it, and I know I'm going to eat it. Before I eat it and after, the whole night is about it. Ice cream. I leave work feeling fat, ugly, big arms, sick in the belly. I eat it and I don't even enjoy it. And this is her at 20. She micromanaged her food, she binged, she purged, and she did this to control her life. So that when life happened, like her boyfriend broke up with her, she would exercise until her bones ached. When she lost her job, she would eat one meal a day. Anytime she was uncomfortable, she would escape her feelings by obsessing about her body. She began to think that food and weight were the real problem, and that if she was thin, she wouldn't have any issues. She would, her life would be easy. Now, this began to warp her reality on what she looked like. And when she looked in the mirror, she did not see what other people saw. At age 30, she wrote this. <clears throat> Why didn't anyone tell me I'm chubby? How can I be chubby? Oh no, this is bad, really bad. These pictures make me want to vomit. I want to get plastic surgery on my face. I look like I have two chins, fat arms, big yucky boobs. Ew, my hair is ugly too, too blonde. Bad color, curly isn't good unless it's off my face. And this is a picture she was talking about. So this story, my story, is not unique or special. My story is all around us. Statistics show that 91% of women do not like their body and will resort to dieting. And 81% of 10-year-olds are afraid of being fat. So where is this showing up in your world? Is this you? Is this your friend, your sister, your daughter, even your grandson? If so, then we are not alone. According to the National Eating Disorder Association, in the United States alone, 20 million women and 10 million men will suffer from a clinical significant eating disorder at some point in their lives. So here I was causing myself such pain and suffering. Why? Why was I doing this? Well, I found out one day when I went to the gym and I stepped onto the scale. And that magical number, the number I was trying to reach for years, it appeared. It can't be that, can't be that number. This number means I'm happy. This number means that I'm relieved. This number means that I've solved all my issues with food and weight. But I hadn't. I was not relieved, I was not happy, and I did not solve anything. I was miserable. I knew on that day that something had to give. But honestly, I was way too afraid that if I stopped dieting, that meant that I was fat. And fat at that point meant that I was a failure. And then one day I was playing with my two-year-old niece, and she was having so much fun without a care in the world. And 
I knew that I needed to find that two-year-old inside of me and love her no matter what she looked like. So I began questioning everything that I did. And I realized that I was living in the paradigm of pain equals gain, AKA no pain, no gain. Now we all know this belief, we're force fed it. We believe that in order to achieve our goals, we have to endure blood, sweat, and tears. In order to have the high paying salary, we have to sacrifice all of our time. And in order to have the body that we want, we have to white knuckle our food and exercise hard. This belief, no pain, no gain, is so ingrained in us that when we do receive something easily, we think we don't deserve it or that we're worthy of it. Now, I wanted to receive and feel happiness from my body. How was I gonna feel good if all I was doing was torturing myself and hating myself? There had to be another way. So I challenged this belief, no pain, no gain. Ha, huh. and I wanna tell you what I discovered. Pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure is what we are all looking for. And it is also the pathway to get what we want. Now, I'm not talking about instant gratification. I'm talking about the pleasure that comes from the deep listening that lets us know that we're on the right track. Webster's Dictionary says that pleasure is the happy feeling, is the feeling of happy satisfaction or sensual satisfaction. Now my body was not a home for sensual satisfaction. My body was a battleground. Now the National Center for Biotechnology Information says that our neuroanatomy for pleasure is key to our happiness and to our overall sense of well-being. So in other words, if we want to be happy, we're going to have to have some pleasure in our lives, right? Hmm. I realized I didn't want to just feel good about my body. Pleasure isn't about feeling good about my body. It's about feeling good in my body. But I wasn't connected to it. Oh, I fed it. I moved it. I put it to sleep, but I wasn't listening. So I began to listen to what my body was feeling instead of the negative chatter in my brain. And I began to consciously choose pleasure. I threw away my scale. I decided I could have a good day regardless of what the number said on the scale. And I consciously choose what was right instead of what was wrong. And I realize I like my green eyes and my strong legs and the fact that I can still do a split. And then an unexpected thing happened. I began to enjoy my body. And the more I felt myself, the more I felt okay. No, this was not easy at first. I'm really not gonna lie to you. It was not easy, but I made this my new goal. And then I took it a step further. And I began seeking and finding pleasure in how I moved my body. And I began moving my body in a loving way. And I danced because it was fun, not because of the calories burned. And the more I surrendered to however I felt, the safer I felt to feel. And over time of consciously choosing pleasure, I was able to let go of this belief of no pain, no gain, and adopt a new attitude, which I call more pleasures, more treasures. Now, I wanna leave you with a few things that I have done to take me to throw away that no pain, no gain belief to a life that I have now that's full of pleasure, that's ultimately given me permission and freedom to love myself. Number one, <clears throat> pleasure and our food. So let's face it, after the third piece of chocolate cake, we're really not enjoying ourselves anymore. Something else has kicked in. So if we slow down and really enjoy our food, we may stop after one piece or even two luxurious bites. I know for me, I was so afraid of fear, I caused, I'm so afraid of food. I caused myself so much stress and anxiety that I would restrict and then succumb to my desire, eat as quick as I could, and then felt shame. I never felt safe to have pleasure with my food. Now, I savor my cookies without judgment and my food tastes so much better. Number two. 
Pleasure and our movement, or how we exercise. So as an over-exerciser, I had to take myself off of autopilot and listen to myself daily. What did my body want? So I may have in my mind, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym, but when I listen to what my body wants from that pleasure zone, it may say, do some yoga. I may think I wanna take, I may wanna go for a run, and my body says, take, take a walk or take a nap. I had to let go of exercise and movement that was about punishing and find exercise that was fun. Now, if you're not a lover of movement and exercise, once again, you're going to have to listen carefully and not push, not like, like push yourself through. Really allow yourself to feel, what does my body want? And your body may tell you that it wants to feel alive and confident and have your heart pounding and your blood pumping fr from some movement. Now, we can't talk about movement and pleasure without talking about sex. When we're open and we feel safe to embrace our sexual and sensual nature, we open our bodies up to a whole other level of pleasure through our body. And our bodies thrive from the chemicals that are released through sexual energy and from an orgasm. Number three, how do you talk to yourselves? How we feel about ourselves is a direct correlation to how we talk to ourselves. So are you living with a mind that says, that was ridiculous, I look stupid in this outfit, I'll never look like her. Or are you living with a mind that says kind, non-judgmental things to yourself? Negative body talk is a critical risk factor for the development of eating disorders. And research shows that those who do not like their body actually, actually eat less fruits and vegetables and have decreased activity. I can remember standing in front of my mirror, on purpose, telling myself that I was fat and ugly so that I wouldn't eat. And then I was so surprised when I got up and ran straight to the refrigerator. Now, I'm not telling you that you can move from disgust to, oh, I, I love myself. But we can gently move up the scale. We can say things like, I'm willing to be willing to accept myself for today or even for this afternoon. Or I may not like my butt, but I'm a really good friend. <laughs> so <laughs> my invitation to you is to pick one of these food, movement, or how you talk to yourself, and begin to implement some pleasure in your life today. In fact, we are going to do that right now. So go ahead and take your left hand out in front of you. Go ahead, left hand right out. And I want you to just imagine that you're touching a baby, and just gently bring your hand to your face, and just notice what that feels like, just having your hand there. And with an inhale and an exhale, with all the tenderness that you can muster, just gently give, slide your hand on your face, giving hmm, and receiving hmm, some pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.